Welcome to all the viewers. Myself, Akshay Prakash, student of College of Veterinary and Animal Sciences, Book Code, Vainat, Kerala, studying for BVSC and AIDS under 2017 admission, is going to present a PowerPoint on the topic Toxocariasis in Buffalo and Cattle. Before starting the presentation, I request all the viewers to please like and share this video. And also, you can subscribe my channel and click the bell button so that you can get the notifications of the videos whenever I upload it. Toxocariasis in Buffalo and Cattle The etiological agent or the causative agent is Toxocaria viplorum. Synonym is Neoascaris viplorum. It's coming under the class Nematoda and superfamily Ascaridioidea and the prediction site of this parasite is small intestine. And the principal host affecting is the buffalo followed by cattle and it rarely affects sheep and goats. The geographical distribution is Africa and Asia. Coming into gross description, it's a very large, whitish and translucent web. You can see they are whitish, very large and almost translucent. The adult male is comparatively smaller, up to 25 cm. And the adult female, it's up to 30 cm. That's relatively longer than male. You can see on the left side, it's the adult female. And on the right side, it's the adult male. And the male is comparatively smaller than female and also thinner. Coming into microscopic description, it has a cuticle which is less thick than other ascarids and also somewhat soft and translucent. It has lips which are three in number. It's broad at the base whereas at the anterior portion it's narrow. It has an esophagus which is 3 to 4.5 mm and has a posterior granular ventricles. For the male, the tail usually forms spike-like appendage. They have post-cloacal papillae which is of 5 pairs, but the pre-cloacal papillae is variable in number. Coming into position of the vulva, it's situated anteriorly, that's 1 by 8 of the body length from the anterior portion. About the characteristics, it's almost colorless and subglobular. The shell is thick and the shell has fine pittings. But in Toxocara canis, another species related to Toxocara lorum, which affect dogs, there the shell is having coarse pittings. But in case of here, Toxocara lorum, you can see fine pittings. The size is 75 to 95 microns or micrometer in length and 60 to 74 microns or micrometer in breadth. Here, if a cough is infected with the Toxocara with lorum, it shed a very large quantity of eggs that almost 8 million eggs per day. How the pasture is contaminated? The eggs contaminate the pasture through the dung and the optimum temperature for hatching is 27 to 30 degrees Celsius which is of moderate range. But below 12 degrees Celsius that is in colder conditions the egg development stops. Once this egg reaches the environment, the L2 larvae will develop inside the egg in 7 to 15 days. Another specialty is that this egg survives for months to even years, but the problem is that it's sensitive to direct sunlight. Coming into life cycle, the life cycle is direct, that's there is no involvement of an intermediate host. And the modes of transmission is of three types. 
first postnatal or trans mammary or trans cholesterol and two is prenatal or trans placental and three is direct injection of eggs first postnatal or trans mammary or trans cholesterol which is the most common mode of transmission it affects calf below 6 months of old and the source of infection is through the dam's milk or colostrum here you cannot see any tissue migration that is tissue migration is absent here the larvae is present up to 3 to 4 weeks after calving which is a, an approximate in the pre patent period that is the point from where the entry of eggs till the eggs are seen in the feces that is called pre patent period it's almost 3 to 4 weeks then prenatal or trans placental in this case the fetus is affected in 8 month after 8 month of gestation when immunosuppression occurs in the pregnant cow here the source of infection is the eggs in- ingested from passages by the adult cow which reaches the intestine in the intestine this eggs has to the l2 larvae stage and undergoes somatic migration and get arrested at the l2 stage and after that it become dormant in tissues this stage is also called hypobiosis in a hypobiotic condition that is the arrested stage of development but in the later stage of pregnancy that's after 8 month where immunosuppression happens under the influence of hormones like prolactin here the l2 larvae gets reactivated and they crosses placenta they crosses that barrier and get into the body of calf where it develops to adult in the intestine the last is the direct ingestion of eggs here the eggs, eggs are ingested by either adult cow or calves below 6 months age here eggs if taken by an adult cow we cannot see any patent infection but it proceeds for somatic migration that's it migrates to different tissues and the migratory routes we can see in adult cows when eggs is ingested reach in the stain liver then heart to the lungs and it also migrates to placenta and mammary gland and proceed for transplacental and transmammary transmissions respectively later in gestation and after calving respectively here you can see the life cycle from the past years which is contaminated with the dung the adult cow orally ingests the eggs this eggs containing l2 larvae which is the infective stage reaches the intestine and due to action of different acids the l2 larvae hatches then after this larvae migrates to different organs liver lungs etc and also to placenta and mammary gland where they remain in a stage of hypobiosis that is reduced development where that stage is the arrested stage of development or it's also called crescent stage it to facilitate persistence of larval forms for a prolonged period that is when a cow is infected with this egg containing l2 larval stage it remains under hypobiosis for a very long period till an immunosuppression happens after 8 month of pregnancy or even during 8 month of pregnancy under action of hormones like prolactin then we can see the placental transmission or even the lactogenic transmission to the calf 
when the calf gets this larval stage l2 larval stage the adult the adult is finally developed in the intestine through the developmental process and then the eggs are excreted in the feces these eggs reaches the pasture and in the environment inside the egg the development takes place in such a way from egg then embryonation then l1 then again embryonation to l2 and this egg containing l2 stage is again taken by the cow and the cycle continues about the pathogenesis it's mainly caused by adult worms in the, in the intestines of calves up to 6 months old if the infections are light it may pass unnoticed in calves but heavy infections show clinical signs where you can see 7 to 70 to 500 adult worms per calf and the heavy infections are associated with the following anthrifness catarrhal enteritis intermittent diarrhea and verminous pneumonia about the pathology the pathological effects are of adult worms in the intestine is actually poorly defined but heavy infections obstruct the gut and may even lead to gut perforation also in some cases there may be or in rare cases there may be migration up to bile duct or pancreatic duct that may lead to biliary obstruction and also cholangitis respectively in the pictures you can see first two pictures a and b you can see their gross or macroscopic appearance this picture uh, showing the worms isolated from one month old belgian blue calf on the third picture there you can see they are palpating this worms through the intestinal wall on the last picture they have also done enterotomy to show that the lumen is completely obstructed with these worms so you can imagine about the harms caused by this parasite coming to epidemiology the most important feature is that the cow's tissues is the reservoir of the larvae here through subsequent milk bond transmission to the calf from first day onwards mostly they are exposed to infection and provide them some immunity in some cases and the majority of patent infections occurs in calves of less than 6 months of age and clinical signs is diarrhea steatorrhea colic intestinal obstruction which can also there can be also constipation and then feces uh, it's having a foul smell and also mud colored and also in the breath there will be either rancid butter odor or butyric acid odor sometimes there will be a stone like smell in the breath you can notice this smell also in the urine for both in the breath and urine coming to diagnosis in some instances the heavily infected calves may exhale this butyric acid or acetone like odor then second way is the examination of x in the feces here under the microscope you can see subglobular x with thick pitted shells and in the young calves the output output of x can be very high under the x per gram test you can notice more than 50 to 50000 x per gram but the patency is short and by around 4 to 6 months of age that is in in the younger stage self calves have expelled most of their adult worm population 
diagnosis is also done by clinical signs. In some countries, serological diagnosis is done by immunoassays like ELISA. Coming into treatment. Here the adult worms are susceptible to a wide range of anthelmintics, including piperacin, levamisole, macrocytic lactones, and benzimidazoles. But still the drug of choice is pyrandal palm oil and the dose is 5 to 10 mg per kilogram. You can also use piperacin salts but the problem is that it's effective only against adult worms. And the dosage you can see pyrandal palm oil is 5 to 10 mg per kilogram whereas piperacin salts it's 110 mg per kilogram. How to control these infections? The prevalence of infection can be dramatically reduced by treatment of calves at 3 and 6 weeks of age. By doing this, you can prevent the worms reaching the patency. About the prevention. It's better to always follow a proper general deworming schedule. We have to start deworming from 2 to 3 weeks after birth. The first choice initially we should give piperacin, and the second choice it may be albendazole, fenbendazole, pyrandal pamoid, expenbendazole, etc. Let's go into the deworming schedule. Up to 6 months, every month we should deworm the animal. After 6 months, every 3 months we should deworm the animal. And after 1 year, every 6 months we should deworm the animal. Except day old buffalo calf, we have to deworm the buffalo calf at the time of birth. Because newborn buffalo calves are more prone to toxocarabinolone infection. For day old calf, use piperacin. And the dose is 100 to 150 mg per kilogram orally. After calving, deworm cow also to prevent the transcholesterol transmission of parasitic infection. We have to note one thing that the piperacin in day old buffalo calf should be given only at evening and administering it at morning or evening causes photosensitization. Here you can see due the improper administration of piperacin and accumulation of phenothiazine derivatives on skin which cause photosensitization when the buffalo calf was exposed to sunlight. Then, in case if photosensitization happens, what we should do? We have to separate the buffalo calf from the sunlight. Second thing is withdraw the piperacin drug. Then administer vitamin A injection. We have we know that the vitamin A injection has a function that promote growth of new skin or the superficial skin. Then if we deworm the calf four hours after deworming, that is four hours after giving the piperacin drug or another drugs, we have to administer some purgatives. Uh, this is to clean or remove the intestinal parasites from the digestive tract after the worms have been killed by the piperacin or other deworming drugs. And the choice for a better purgative is magnesium sulfate or the max self. You can give 25 to 30 grams orally by drenching and it should be done only 4 hours after deworming. And we have to note one thing, we should not give magnesium sulfate or maxself along with this deworming agent. It will lead to collapse. So it's always better to give this maxself or magnesium sulfate four hours after the deworming agent separately. Then another two methods are to prevent these infections are Manual, re manual removal from the shed and disinfection of cow shed 
with effective and cost effective disinfectants thank you like share and subscribe